If my pantaloons had a stain in the back, would you wash me good? Throw me on the bed and kick me in the dick tonight. Anyway, speaking of being a dick, um, <clears throat> yeah, I want to talk about uh, Roy Moore. Um, listen, I, okay, I don't know where to go with this because I, I, I do agree with what he's saying. I don't agree with how he's saying it. Let me put it this way. Um, there's there's this one pastor. I don't I forgot his name, but he he makes these videos. He goes with his little camera, and every holiday he wants to go to the local malls. He's probably in Texas or some fucking or Alabama or some some third world secondary southern shithole state, whatever. <clears throat> um. Some Confederate flag waving state, whatever. Um, and he wants to go to the malls during Christmas time. And while kids are waiting in line to see Santa, he wants to scream at the top of his lungs that Santa's not real and Jesus is the reason for the season and don't lie to your kids, parents, and blah, blah, blah. Listen, he might be stating actual truth, but he's being a fucking asshole about it. He's being a major dick about it. I'm saying you just don't do that. You don't... Listen... There's things to do, and there's ways not to do it. Okay? Like, for example, Jesus did not go up to the woman at the well and say, Hey, you fucking whore, you're going to hell, fuck you and die. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. What did he do? What did he do? He went to her in love. He didn't treat her like everybody else did. That, that simple message, that simple thing spoke volumes to her. That's why she changed. That's why she did things differently. You can't just walk up to a homosexual and say, you're going to hell because you're sucking dick. Well, you know what? You're going to hell too for being a fucking moron. How about that? Well, I believe in Jesus. You know what? Even Satan believes in Jesus. Let's be honest. Satan believes Jesus exists. He believes in Jesus. Even Satan quotes scripture. Okay. At the end of the day, he's still an asshole. Just like 99% of Christians today, yeah, you might, might you might be able to quote every Bible verse. You might know the Bible. You might even be saved, but you're still being a fucking asshole. You're still being an asshole. There's a difference. Okay, Jesus was not an asshole. He was not a jerk. He was not a fucker. Okay, he was none of those things. Yeah, you look at somebody like, like uh, Roy Moore. And his wife coming out saying, Oh, George Soros is a Jew and he's going to that awful place and blah, blah, blah. You know what? That might be true. But that's not going to change his heart. That is not going to change his heart. He needs to see the love of Christ. You, by saying that, are not showing the love of Christ. So all these gay people who are going to hell, you know who that's on? That's not totally on them. That's on you for being an asshole. That's on you for pushing them away. Jesus would not have pushed a homosexual away. He wouldn't. Did he push the tax collector away? Did he push the disciples away? Did he push the woman at the well away? The, uh, the woman who touched his garment, did he push her away? No, he did not. In love, he accepted them. Didn't agree with what they were doing. Didn't agree with what they were in the middle of. That had nothing to do with it. That had nothing to do with it. He showed them something that no one else had ever shown them. And that simple kind kindness and love is what he showed them. And the idea, you got people like this, these, these, these born-again Christians who are just complete sons of bitches. And they are. They are complete sons of bitches. They are pushing people away instead of bringing them into the gospel, bringing them into the love of Christ, to say, hey, you know what? You're gay. Jesus still loves you. No, what do they want to do? You're a faggot and you're going to hell. What the hell good does that do? What good does that do? Makes you feel good for about two seconds. Well, guess what? Jesus in the Bible says, you've already gotten your reward. Go fuck yourself. That's, that's essentially what the Bible says. Now, I'm sorry, but that irritates me. That bugs me. That really bugs me. And freaking Roy Moore. 
oh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna wait on God. We're gonna get a recount because because you know this couldn't have been the outcome because God wanted me to be the the senator and blah blah blah. Guess what? If God wanted you to be the man, you would have won overwhelmingly. The fact that you lost. Face facts. God didn't like you. Okay? God didn't want you to win. Because you're an asshole. You're a son of a bitch. And even... Forget the allegations. Forget the sexual things and the pedophilia. Forget all that stuff. Just the simple fact that as a Christian, you're an asshole. I'm not saying Christians are assholes. I'm saying that when you take the Christian faith and the Christian belief and, and Jesus words and you take those things and you push them into people's throats and down their fucking throats and beat them over the head with it you are a son of a bitch you are a biblical son of a bitch is what you are you're a biblical bastard and that's exactly what he is now I admit I do it sometimes too okay you know hey I judge people too I'm not gonna lie I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here preaching to the choir here but Guess what? These simple acts of kindness to people that they have never seen before because everybody just looks at them and points and you're a whore, you're a, you're an adulterer, you're a gay person, you're white, you're black, whatever the fuck you are. You swear too much, fuck you, okay? Whatever. Showing that simple act of kindness of, hey, guess what? That's not even an issue. I'm not, we're not even going to bring that up. We're not even going to talk about that. I mean, did he do that to the woman as well? Did he say, oh, uh, yeah, you did this, 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 and uh, yeah, you need to repent of that. Now, don't get me wrong. Yeah, you had to repent of that. But that's not what it was about at that moment. At that moment, it was about drawing her in to the point where it's like she wanted to repent. You say to a homosexual, you're going to hell because you're fucking gay, they're not going to repent. They're not going to change their way and be just magically like, oh, pray the gay away. Okay, fuck that. That's not going to happen. Now, do I like the idea of homosexuality? No, I'm not a big fan of it. It, it doesn't compute with me. It doesn't... Hey. But hey, you know what? One, one man's... Homosexuality is another man's Saturday night, as far as I'm concerned, because who, whatever, you know, I don't engage in it because I, I don't get it. I don't want to get into all that, but I don't get it. It is what it is. Okay, now does the Bible say God does not appreciate that? Yes, it does. The Bible does say that it's not good for a man to lay with another man, it's not good, it's an abomination. Dad doesn't like it. Okay, fine, yes, that's what the Bible says, that's the truth. But coming at a homosexual saying that just, oh, God thinks what you, everything you are is an abomination, Jesus would not have started the conversation that way. He wouldn't. He would have said, you know, well, what did he say? He said, sell what you have and come follow me. Come be a disciple. Put that stuff away and, and, and stop worrying about the here and now and your pleasures of the flesh and pleasures of the world. Come and follow me and store up treasures in heaven. That's what it was about. He saw, well, he saw basically everyone from that viewpoint, the heavenly viewpoint, not the here and now, not the, we're all in, see, you gotta understand, we're all in the gutter at the same time. So for, it's, it's like that, what's the verse say about trying to take the, the, speck out of your, your brother's eye when you got the beam in yours. Okay, that's exactly what it is. You, as a Christian, are in no position to say you're going to hell for this, this, and this. Okay, you are in no position. Well, that's what the Bible says. Yes, that might be what the Bible says, but to come at someone else like that, you have no authority to do that. You are in no position to do that. Why? Did Jesus do it? He had the authority. Did he do it that way? No. So who the hell are you to say you're better than Jesus to come at somebody and say, hey, guess what? Now, don't get me wrong. Yes, the Bible says what the Bible says. I'm not saying downplay it or water it down. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that starting a discussion instantly with you're a bad person, you're going to hell, fuck you. That does not change their heart. That does not make them think twice. That does not say, hey, maybe there's a better way. Maybe I should put this stuff away. Maybe I should put this, these earthly desires and these fleshly desires away and come follow Jesus. That doesn't happen. 
Why? Because there's no incentive for them. There's no love there. There's no love there. I mean, come on. You, you, you continue to do what you do, you're going to hell. I'd be like me saying, okay, if you're a woman, because you're a woman, you're going to hell. Well, you can't change that. Now, you, now okay, I know a lot of Christians be like, well, if you're gay, you can change it and pray the gay away. Listen, whatever. It's like anything else. Even if you want to say it's a mental thing, and I do think there's a mental component there, but that's just me. Even if you want to say it's all that, this, that, or the other, it's like anything else, like a drug addict. Can a drug addict get off drugs just by saying, if you if you continue to take drugs, you're going to die and go to hell? Is that going to change them? No. No. That's There's no internal change there. There's nothing there. You might because a lot of people have this idea that they're doing their their duty, they're they're doing their due diligence, that they're 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 informing the people. Oh, the Bible says this, and you have to understand that, and blah blah blah. And if you don't like it, you you know whatever. That's not how it works. Yes, it's there, but the opening statement. It's like anything else. The opening statement. You don't automatically go. See, that is your end. Like, like, for example, if you're, if you're a lawyer, you're not going to go to the jury and say, well, he's going to hell. Yeah, he did it. He's a piece of shit. He's guilty. Fuck him. And they'll walk out. You're not going to do that. You're, you, you were literally going to try to plead your case before you go into, this is why. I mean, it's like anything else. It's like anything else. You don't, you don't just eat the frosting. You eat the cake and the frosting. Okay, you have to take the whole picture and then work your way down and work your way into it. You can't just, just hit with the, 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 you know, your opening salvo cannot be the end game of you're going to hell. Duh. Okay. It, that, again, that does nothing. It changes nothing. So you got this, this idiot pastor. And I say idiot, yes, he's a fucking moron. He runs he runs around the malls and saying, urr, urr, Santa Claus isn't real. Now, yes, he is speaking absolute 100% truth, but he's being an asshole. He's being a fucker. He's being a literal fucker about it. Roy Moore is a complete fucker. He's being an asshole using his faith. And he wants to quote scripture and oh, this can't be, this can't be, I couldn't have lost because I'm God's man. All these people who think they're God's man are nothing. They're garbage. They're losers. Okay, if you call yourself God's man, you are a fucking loser. Okay, God will call you his man. The people that are surrounding you will call you God's man. You calling yourself God's man is egotistical and bullshit. Okay? I'm just saying it right off the bat. All these people want to say, oh, I studied the Bible for 40 years. Well, then you should understand that even at your best, you're still far from God. Even at your best, you still don't know it. So to sit there and brag about, oh, for 40 years, 40 years, I've been in the Bible for 40 years. That means you've learned nothing. You have learned zero. You're a fool. Because one of the damnedest problems about Bible-believing people is, oh, there's persecution, they're coming against me. No, they're coming against you because you're a fucking moron. See, and I'm going to be honest with you, this is one Bible verse that I legitimately have an issue with, as in, I, I don't see it, like, I believe that it's all 100% true, it's all God's word, etc., etc., but there's one verse specifically that I have a hard time saying, yes, I, I believe that is 100% true. And that's the verse where Jesus said, the world will hate you because it first hated me. Because here's the newsflash, the world, even Muslims, even, even Satanists don't even hate Jesus. They don't. The world doesn't hate Jesus. Yes, the world hates Christians because most of them are fucking assholes. Again, going, going to a mall and telling a bunch of six and seven year old kids that Santa's not real. Well, guess what? You're an asshole. That's why people hate the Bible. That's why the Bible's not being, you know, propagated throughout the world. Because Christians are too busy on their fucking high horse being sons of bitches. It's a fact. 
It is a legitimate fact. And again, there's a way to do it. Our goal should be to be Christ-like. How would Jesus have handled it? Would he have gone to the homosexual? Would he have gone to the seven-year-old kid and just hit them head over the you know bash them over the fucking head with the truth? That's not how it works. Jesus never did that. He didn't. He did not do that ever. I mean, I think about the only time he ever really got rowdy is when he overturned the tables and called everybody bastards. That was about it. And they were, because they were bastardizing the, the house of God. They were. And, it, you know, now you can make the argument, well, at this point, the homosexual is not going to accept Jesus, so I might as well just hit him with the truth. Dude, the problem, you're not, who are you to make that determination? You, you are not that person to make that determination. Only God can make that determination. Only God can harden somebody's heart because he knows they're not going to change. Like Saul, for example, in that moment. I'm sorry, it just doesn't work that way. You do not know. Our commission, the Great Commission, is to go and propagate the Bible to the rest of the world. And yes, that means the homosexual. Well, we are. That's what we're doing. We're telling them about the Bible. No, you're not. You're not telling them about the Bible. You're telling them a way to not want to care about the Bible. And instead of saying, "Well, here's what the Bible says," here, you know, you could love everybody. Okay, love your neighbor as yourself. Instead of telling them the good things, you're telling them the ultimate bad thing. It's like starting out. Um, I mean, seriously, imagine on your first date if, if you know, the woman says, "Hey, I got you know herpes." Are you going to want to date that woman ever again? Seriously? My vagina fell off because I've got like the massive case of herpes. Are you ever going to want to even touch that? On your first date? Is is that the is that the 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 the, the opening line of, you know, you're standing at a candlelight dinner and you have a nice romantic dinner with the woman and she's like, "Hey, I got herpes and my 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 my, my, my stuff fell off." Just all rotten and goopy back there. And you're like, okay, this night's over. Okay. I mean, seriously. I mean, you know, at least get to know the woman. Hey, you know, I like like long beats on the walk. And oh, yeah, and I got herpes too. You know, whatever. <laughs> what, whatever. There's ways to do it. There's ways to do it. And these people, I'm sorry, I get a bad vibe about the dude uh, more. I get a. I look at him and those little beady black eyes, and his wife has got the beady little black eyes. I don't even know what color their eyes are, but they're just these weird little little eyes, and they're like like looking through you and stuff. I get a bad vibe from the dude. I just do. I don't trust the guy. I'm not saying he's a pedophile. I'm not saying I agree with all that. I'm not saying I don't agree with that. I'm just you know, hey, it is what it is. But I don't know, man. The guy just. He, I get a, I get a weird feeling about him, and he wants to sit and quote scriptures. Anybody who wants to quote scripture like that bothers me because he's trying way too hard to persuade other people that he's something that he may or may not be. I'm sorry, if you're a Bible believing person, you don't need to prove yourself. Like, oh, I quote the scriptures. And, oh, you know, like last night, his his concession speech. I don't even know what the hell it was. It wasn't even really a concession speech. He said, oh, you know, he started quoting all these Bible verses. It made, like, no sense at all. Now we're going to wait on the Lord and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like you can say all the right stuff. Satan even said the right stuff. Satan quotes scripture all the time. Doesn't mean he's right. You know, doesn't mean he's wrong either, necessarily. Technically, I guess you could say. Obviously, well, you know he is, but he's, he's using it to manipulate the situation, you know. Like when he tempted Christ, you know, he was, he was quoting scripture. He knows the scriptures, you know. More knows the scriptures. Now, is he out there touching small children? I don't know. I don't know. No, I'm... See, and that's another thing. Born-again Christians... Well... <sighs> 
I should definitely make a distinction between the GOP and the Republicans and the, the, the political bullshit and then the actual born-again Christians. But I heard actual born-again Christians making excuses, making excuses why it's okay to, to, to sexually molest a, a minor. Well, Mary, Mary was 14 when she had, when she was impregnated by the Holy Spirit, and then Joseph had her. Oh, really? Really? That, that, you know, that's, that's your, uh, okay, okay, well, guess what? We have certain laws now. That it's not cool to be 14 being molested in sexually, uh, you know, predatory sexual advances toward a 14 year old we've determined that as a fact so guess what either e even 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 if you want to make that argument which i think is a bullshit argument he still broke the fucking law did he not did he break the law did he break the law did, uh, did he break the law the law says you touch somebody under whatever what 18 then guess what you're a pedophile you're a piece of shit you're going to prison Okay. You don't make excuses for it. You don't sit there and go, well, it might be okay. I think God might look down on it and say, hey, you know what? It's two consenting people and, uh, no, fuck you. You're an idiot. You're a straight up moron. Stop making excuses for your own bullshit. We all do it. We all make excuses for our bullshit. We all do it. I do it. You do it. Everybody does it. We need to stop that. We need to stop that bullshit. Stop making excuses for your bullshit. I'll say it again. It's just... And then sit there and time after time after time. And they're making excuses and making excuses and making excuses. They, they, well, you know what? They make excuses for Donald Trump. because Oh, he's, he's uh, the, the prophecy of Cyrus. Ooh. He, dude, if he's the prophecy of Cyrus, then we are fucked. Okay? If he is some sort of, I don't even know what the hell you'd call it. I, I don't even know, but this whole prophecy of Cyrus bullshit. Again, if he is, if, if Donald Trump is the prophecy of Cyrus, we are screwed. Okay. Which, I'm sorry, I think that is absolute bullshit. Because if you look at the way things worked, especially with Cyrus... And then to, to say that Donald Trump, oh my God, it, it's almost a disgrace to reality. It's, I didn't want to discuss that. I didn't want to discuss that. But hey, you know, you put your blinders on and like, oh, he's of God, so anything he does is great. Grab him by the pussy. Oh, moving on him like a bitch. Oh, 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 oh. Praise Jesus. You're a fucking moron. You're just a fucking moron. You're an idiot. And this isn't one of those things where it's like, oh, you believe in the Bible, so it's, you know, it's like fool's gold. The only world will call you stupid, the world will call you foolish, blah, blah, blah. No, there's a difference between that and what I'm saying. I am saying that you're using your faith, you're using biblical scripture to be a fucking moron. It's an excuse to be a bastard. It's an excuse for, okay, yeah, I fucked up, but the Bible says it's okay, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? If a homosexual fucked up and had his sucking dick in the corner, but that's not okay. Okay, well, no, that's because you're going to hell. Yeah, but you you fucking molested a, a fucking child, and that's cool? You're not going to hell for that? I mean, seriously? Well, well I'm saved. I believe in Jesus. <sighs> I don't know. Jesus molested any fucking 14-year-olds? I don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe that's what he did on the weekend. Who the fuck knows? I don't know. I wasn't there 2,000 years ago. I don't know. What, 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 the, what the hell do you do in Bethlehem? What the, what, what the hell do you do in Nazareth? What the hell do you do in Damascus on weekends? I don't know what the fuck they do on weekends. I know there's a town called Sodomy. I mean, maybe they're all fucking each other in the ass. I don't know. Maybe that's what they do on the weekend. Whatever. Who am I to judge, you know? Not a good quality porn like anybody else. Who am I to judge? Okay. So let's be honest with ourselves. Just, I find it annoying. I find it irritating that people just they overlook their own stink they're like oh yeah nah. okay and they want to point out everybody else's well that's not what Jesus did he didn't like hey you stink motherfucker go shower your ass you stink he never said that to nobody he never said it <laughs> I don't think he did I mean, the Bible didn't you know record every single solitary conversation he had maybe he said that to somebody he's like hey 
Peter and Paul, your ass didn't go wash. I don't know, maybe he said that to people. It'd be kind of funny if he did, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, you know? I think collectively he came at it in a different approach. See, it's about the approach. It's like, it's like, you know, Christianity, you know, the church is like a plane, and these motherfuckers just want to nosedive that shit right into the, you know, like the big one bomber, like, right into the fucking thing. They, they want to kamikaze that shit, and they're like, hey, you're going to hell, boom. You're going to hell, you're queer, boom. You're gay, boom. You're liberal, boom. You're just land that fucking thing, or just, like, Instead of gently landing the fucker on a carrier and be like, oh, look at that, a beautiful landing. Da, da, da. No, they want to fucking just ram it up your fucking ass and be done with you. And what good does that serve? It serves nothing. It serves you. It serves you in the moment. Because you're getting glory out of it. You, you feel you're doing something special. And that's not what Jesus said. That's not what God says. That's not what the Bible says necessarily when I say that. Now, yes, what you're saying is what the Bible is saying. But you're coming at it in such a way that they are that the people you're trying to communicate to, they're not going to receive what you're saying because you, you, you're being an asshole about it. You're being a prick. You're purposely being a prick. You're being a Bible prick. You're being a spiritual prick. Kicking against a prick. You're being a prick. You are. You're being a legitimate asshole. Again, I'm not saying downplay what they're doing. I'm not saying sugarcoat what they're doing. I'm not saying any of that stuff, but starting a conversation with duh, is not the way to go. It's not how you start a conversation with somebody. It's not. I'm sorry. No, seriously, now imagine if I went up to uh, Roy Moore and said, you're a beady-eyed little fuck. Now, how is that going to... Now, if we're going to have a friendship, a biblical understanding of each other... As, you know, brothers in the faith, me calling him a beady-eyed little fuck, that's not a good way to start out the conversation. Now, is it? That's not a good way to start out the, you know, th that's not going to get me invited over to, the, you know, the, uh, the Super Bowl weekend party, okay, in the big 18-foot-long 18, 18 sub. Okay, at Michael, or, uh, Michael Moore, yeah, uh, Roy Moore's house. Oh, could you imagine one at Michael Moore's house? Jesus, that thing's probably halfway around the block. You know, that fucker like to eat. I mean, seriously. But that's neither here nor there. Now, man, get, get those two fuckers in a room. Jeez, you got Michael Moore and, and uh, Roy Moore together? Jesus. <sighs> but anyway, whatever. Me telling Roy Moore that he's a beady eyed little fuck is not gonna. It's not gonna. It, it's not. No. I don't know. It, maybe this is all just me. I don't know. But it's just my personal beef with the situation. My personal little, little, little beef with the situation. Because. Oh my God! It's like we're supposed to go preach the gospel, and they and yes, they are technically preaching the gospel. I'm not, and I'm I, please don't misunderstand me when I say that. I'm not saying sugarcoated. I'm not saying downplay it. I'm not saying any of that stuff. But you're opening like, how do you do? Shake your hand. You can, you're not gonna shake your hand. Look at somebody and say you're a fucking piece of shit. Go to hell. Okay, that's just that's not how you start a dialogue. It's not. Your goal is not to change their behavior. Your goal is to get them to understand Jesus. They don't have to stop being homosexual to understand Jesus. Did we? When we, when we were saved? Yeah, we had to repent of our sins, but did that mean we just instantly stopped? Not all the time. I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying sugarcoat it, I'm not saying downplay it, but the simple fact, we have this idea that we have to change the person before they can be used of God. That's not how God works. If God waited for us to get right, nothing would ever get done. God has to use people where they are. And guess what? They're in the gutter. Even the best of us are in the gutter. So God has to use people in the gutter. God had to use Moses. A little speech impediment. A little, little, little speech impediment. Okay. No wonder, no wonder, because the whole Bible's about the earth, thou, and the motherfucker can't speak. You wonder why. You wonder why he can't speak. I get confused with that the earth, thou bullshit, too. So, hey, guess what? I'm in the same boat, you know? I mean, honestly. We are not, it is not our, it is not 
for us to change them. It's the Holy Spirit to change them. And if you're coming at them pretending that you're the Holy Spirit going to change them, you're going to hell if you do this. That's not for you to do. That's not for you to change. That's not for you to actually come at them that way. You are to come at them with the love of God to, to reflect the love of Christ to them. Not to fix them, not to change them. That is not on you. That's the Holy Spirit. That is God himself who is supposed to be the one to do that. Now, how is he supposed to do his work when you stood in the way and tried to be the ambassador between bullshit and your, your way of thinking? You are not the ambassador. You are not the one standing between God and man. You are not Jesus. That is not your role. Your role is not to go at the homosexual instantly and be like, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. You suck dick, you're going to hell. No, that is not how it works, fucker. That is not how it works. <sighs> Swear to God. That is not how it works. I'm sorry, that is not your place. Yet. Christian after Christian after Christian, political Christian, feel oh, oh no, 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 damn liberals. Dur, 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 dur. Well, if they're the damn liberals, then what the fuck are you even doing? Because you're obviously clearly not there to, to 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 give them the gospel. You were there to push them away, to make them worse, and all you want to do is have people tickle your fucking little ears and ding ling ling ding ling ling and say what the hell you want to hear. Like, I mean, seriously, 90% of Christians will watch Fox News and all this bullshit because it's what they want to hear. They don't want to hear truth. They don't want to hear potential other, you know, viewpoints. Like, oh, the damn liberals, I ain't going to watch that other media because they're the damn liberals. Well, you know what? Maybe the damn liberals have a point. Maybe the damn liberals, you know, are actually doing what Jesus said. Accent. See, that's the problem. And this is something I've noticed. Liberals do what Jesus wants accidentally. We have the conservatives who are supposed to be the Bible-fearing Christian community. They're going completely off the deep end. Okay, we're worrying about tax cuts in, in general. Worrying about Seriously, think about what a tax cut is. You're talking about earthly funds and, quote-unquote, you getting more of that back. Which sounds cute on paper, but when you're in the legitimate middle class, we're talking like 30000 to 75000 Okay, not the 450000 Dude, if you got enough money to start a business, you're not in the middle class. You're just not. Okay. <clears throat> so, we're worrying about earthly issues. That is not of God. God was about kingdom first. You listen to it. You read the Gospels. The first thing he started when he... Literally, the first words that Jesus spoke, or anything dealing with him, was about the kingdom. Be born again. What does that mean? How do we go back into our mother's womb, they asked. Well, no, it's not about that. It's about being baptized with water and the Spirit, and your 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 being thinking differently. Don't view it from, oh, how do, what, what can I get out of this? Think, what can I do for other people? Think... Not, oh, I want to save my own life, but how can I help others come to the gospel of Christ? I mean, that's basically what it comes down to. It's the kingdom first. Seek ye the kingdom first. Okay, not seek ye the tax cuts first. Seek ye earthly goods first. Seek ye another fucking yacht. Sean Hannity, Mr. Big Christian. I want to light a candle because I'm a Christian. No, you're a Catholic and there's a difference. Okay. You're a boneheaded don't even get me started. Now, I, I, I've got Catholic family members. I've sat through numerous masses. And I'm going to be honest with you, it, it's dead. Everything that is preached is dead. They say all the right words, but the meaning behind the words, the, the power behind said words, there is no power there. They are mundane. They're, they're, it, they mean well, but everything that they're saying has no power. It's a fact. It's a fact. I've sat through numerous masses, and I can tell you as a fact, that's true. Oh, they talk about Jesus and the resurrection, and he's the way, the truth, and life. There's no power behind what they're saying. They're saying all the right words, but there's nothing there. Okay, 
And all Sean Hannity wants to do is go light a fucking candle because God's going to look down and smile and say, Oh, Sean, you, 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 you lit the fucking candle. Praise God. Holy fuck. That's what they think. That's, that's what they think. Okay. Like, that magic candle is going to change the fucking universe somehow. I'm sorry, people... And it's... Just... Uh, <sighs> Having had an actual Jewish friend who wants to fucking do candles and shit. I'm sorry, the candles just give me the fucking shits, but I don't want to get into that. <sighs> fuck, fuck your candle, basically. Take your fucking candle, ramrod that thing up your fucking ass, and then light it from the other end. And every time you burp, it blows out. Shut the fuck up, you're an idiot. Take your candles and shove them up your ass. That's all I'm going to say on that. Fact, in fact, in fact... <laughs> Blow that out, motherfucker.